Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Come and get it! Here's a bell ringer breakfast dish. A heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice covered with rich, thick yellow cream and topped with sweet, chilled fruit. Mmm, mmm. Just taste the tender crispness, the delicious nut-like flavor of Quaker puffed wheat and rice. See how lusciously they blend with the fruit and velvety smooth cream. For this bell ringer treat, hurry and stock up on delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Lynn Beckett had come to the Yukon Territory with his wife Lucy and his small son Tommy. Lynn had tried his hand at working a claim, but finding that it didn't pay off, he took a job with the express company at Selkirk as clerk in the office. As time went by, John Danvers, express agent and Lynn's boss, seemed to put more and more responsibility on Lynn Beckett's shoulders. But instead of resenting it, Lynn was complimented to have his boss trust him so completely. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Danvers. Cold enough for you this morning? Morning, Lynn. I reckon it's the coldest we've had this fall. Yes, I guess it is. The last boat to go before winter hits is due to leave here today at noon. Yes, I know. Everything ready that's to go on the boat, Lynn? Oh, yes, sir. Everything but the shipment from the bank. I don't know how much they're sending yet. Well, you take care of it, will you? Make out the necessary shipment papers and receipt. Use the company stamp that's in my desk drawer. Just put my initials on the receipt, since the agent is supposed to sign it. I have some business up Beaver Creek this morning. Won't get back till this afternoon. All right, sir. I'll take care of everything. Good. Don't know what I'd do without you around here, Lynn. If recommendations will do any good, you ought to be getting a raise before long. Gosh, I, I sure could use one. We sort of have a tough time making ends meet with the payments coming due every month from the cabin. Yes, right? I know, I know. Well, I'll go to the livery stable and get my horse. You take care of things, Lynn. Be seeing you this afternoon. So long. Bye, sir. An hour after Mr. Danvers left the office, the bags of gold were delivered to Lynn by a man from the bank, and duly checked and signed for. A short time later, Lynn was preparing to take the shipment to the boat when two men entered the express office. As they entered, Lynn looked up. What? Then, seeing the drawn guns, he reached toward the desk drawer. Hold up, I'll see Hold you. Hold mister, if you don't want a bullet. Put him up and fast. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be easy. The bank gold is right there on the counter. Can't take that. It's to go on the boat. We're taking it, all right. And what's more, you're going to come along with us. we got an extra horse outside for you to ride. No, no, you can't make me go with you. It's either that or a bullet. Take your choice. Now, help Lou carry those bags of gold out and put them in the saddlebags. Get a move on, or we'll leave you here with a couple of bullets in you. It was just before sailing time when John Danvers hurriedly entered the constable's office in Selkirk. Well, Mr. Danvers, what can I do for you? Constable, something strange has happened. Now, I don't want to think that my clerk, Lynn Beckett, would pull anything crooked. What do you mean? But... What's happened? Well, a gold shipment from the bank was delivered to our office this morning, they tell me. I had business up on Beaver Creek and left early. Just got back a short time ago. The gold isn't in the office, and neither is Beckett. But it hasn't been delivered to the post. I just came from there. Uh, maybe he stopped at his cabin for something. 
isn't too late yet for him to get to the boat. But his cabin is the other end of town. The dock is just a short way from the office. I I told Beckett I'd be back in time to sign for the gold. Instead of that, he signed my name to the receipt himself. Well, do you think anything happened at the office? I mean, the crooks might have... The safe was open, but the contents are still intact. Just the bank gold is missing. And so is Beckett. Well, let's go look for him. Might be around town. Boat's leaving now. Come on. We'll run down to the dock and find out if he showed up after you left there. A short time later, the constable and Danvers arrived at the dock. The boat was already out in midstream. The last one of the men who helped with the gangplank. Hey, Joe! Hey, constable! What's up, Joe? You see Lynn Beckett deliver any express to the boat? Nope, I've been here right along. I haven't seen Lynn come near the boat this morning. Oh, that looks bad, constable. Yes, it sure does. We'll go to Beckett's cabin and talk to his wife. Come on. It was a short time later when Lucy Beckett responded to a knock at the cabin door. I'll open the door, Mama. No, Tommy, you finish your lunch. Oh, Mr. Danvers and the constable. Is there something wrong? We were hoping your husband was here, Mrs. Beckett. May we come in a minute? Yes, yes, of course. I was expecting Lynn home for lunch. He must be at the office waiting for you to stay while he comes home. Lynn isn't at the office, Mrs. Beckett. As Mr. Danvers said, we were hoping to find him here. Isn't Papa coming home to lunch, Mama? Hush, Tommy. What's wrong, Mr. Danvers? Why have you and the constable come to find Lynn? Well, he signed my name to a receipt for gold from the bank, which was to go on the boat. He and the gold are both gone from the office. Oh, no. And he didn't take it to the boat. There, there must be some mistake. What Mr. Danvers says is true, Mrs. Beckett. If you think for one minute that Lynn took that gold with the intention of keeping it, you're very much mistaken. Why, he wouldn't think of doing such a thing. I hope you're right. The fact remains he didn't take it to the boat. And he's missing and so is the gold. It looks very much as though he's deserted you and made off with that gold, Mrs. Beckett. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll never believe that, never. You can't say that about my father. I won't let hush, you. Hush, Tommy. We'll know if he tries to get in touch with you, Mrs. Beckett. Come on, Constable. The sooner you pick up his trail, the better. I'm sorry, Mrs. Beckett. Perhaps there's some other explanation, but... Well, right now, it looks bad for your husband. I'm sure there's an explanation. Please, Constable, let me know when you have any news of Lynn. Please, I... I know he couldn't do such a thing. He just couldn't. I'll let you know. Come on, Mr. Danvers. Meantime, the two crooks, Chuck and Lou, had forced Lynn at gunpoint to ride with them up the north trail. It was late afternoon when they finally halted. Oh, 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 oh. All right, mister. I reckon it's safe enough to turn you loose now. Uh, you mean I, I'm free to go back to town? Sure. <laughs> You're lucky you were so good to you. Yeah, that's right. By the time you go back and tell what happened, we'll be plenty far away, eh, Lou? Yeah. I don't get it. You know I'll go right to the constable. Yeah. The Monty's will be on your trail in no time. <laughs> well, what do you know about that, Lou? He's going to go to the constable. Yeah. I reckon he figures he's a law-abiding type and just has to do his duty. <laughs> you better get started, mister, before we think it over and change our minds about letting you go. All right, all right, I'll go right now. Get up! <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. I reckon the constable will believe his story, Lou? <laughs> Not if Danvers got there first. <laughs> Hey, let's get moving, Chuck. Get up! Sure. Get up! There. Come on! Get up! About two hours later, Lynn reached Selkirk and rode directly to the constable's office, where he found Sergeant Preston and King with the constable. Constable! Look, Sergeant, it's Lynn Beckett. Lynn! Constable was just telling me that you were missing. Hello, Sergeant. I'm glad you're here. King and I arrived a short time ago. I was told you couldn't be found and that a bank shipment of gold is missing. I got here as soon as I could to tell about that. Well, I was sure there was nothing to worry about. Oh, but there is, Sergeant. Two men held up the express office and forced me to ride with them out the North Trail. Oh, well, how did you get here? Where's the gold? Well, they finally let me go. But they went on with the gold in their saddlebags. You expect us to believe that, Beckett? But it's true. Well, then why didn't they take what was in the office safe? I don't know about that, Constable, but they did take the gold. If you hurry, maybe you can trail them. Mr. Danvers came to town before the boat sailed checked and he found the gold wasn't aboard and you were gone from the office. Mr. Danvers told me he'd be gone until late afternoon. Yes, I suppose you counted on that, Beckett. 
Can't figure out why you've come back. Oh, I told you. As soon as they let me go, I hurried back here to report the robbery. Now, your story's fantastic, Beggett. But it's true. I've told just exactly what happened. They supplied an extra horse. And they let you keep it to ride back to town, huh? I found out they rented it from the livery stable. I wondered what you'd say. Danvers told me he checked and found you'd but... sent someone to rent a horse. I did not. Danvers also said he told you he'd be back in time to accept the gold shipment. <clears throat> the receipt was to have the company stamp on it with his initials. You were told to notify the bank to wait for word from Danvers. Instead, you let them send the gold, then searched his desk for the stamp and put his initials on the receipt. Well, yes. He told me to take the shipment and to use the company stamp and to initial it for him. He said he wouldn't be back in town until late. Danvers has no reason to lie, Beckett. You have. Now, look, Constable, I told you exactly what happened. If you trail those crooks, you'll find they have the gold. Looks as though you went somewhere and hid that gold, and then came back with this cock and bull story. Just a minute, Harry. Why would he come back at all? He sent me on a wild goose chase so he could skip with his wife and boy. Oh, no, you're all wrong, Constable. Get Mr. Danvers here. I, I am sure you misunderstood him about the receipt. Yeah, we'll let you face it, Danvers. But he's the one who insists we find you. Sergeant Preston and I were just about to go and pick up your trail. Well, now that Lynn is here, Harry, what do you intend to do? Beckett, I'm holding you on suspicion of grand larceny. Danvers has already signed a complaint against you. Best thing for you to do now is to admit you stole the gold and tell us where it's hidden. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat, bing! And Quaker puffed rice, bing! I take it, young fellow, you want to be an imitator. <laughs> Well, I keep trying. Well, you just keep listening every time we talk about the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Say, isn't that why they're so big and swill-tasting? Yep, and so crisp and tender, they just about melt in your mouth. You see, these choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Sure, they're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Boy, first thing at breakfast, I like to fill up a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or rice and pour lots of milk or cream on it and put some fruit on, too. Say, there's a luscious taste treat fit for a king. And it's not only good, it's good for you. That's why I eat it every single morning. That a boy, because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So take a tip, all you fellas and girls. Treat yourself to delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Start tomorrow morning. Now to continue. When the constable told Lynn Beckett he was to be held for robbing the express office of the gold shipment, Lynn became very much upset. You mean you're going to keep me here in jail like a criminal? Now look, constable, think of the disgrace to my wife and boy. I, I can't stand to have Tommy think his father's a thief. I'm sorry, Beckett. Should have thought about that before. Hold on, Harry. From what I've heard, I'm inclined to think that there's more to this than the conclusions you've drawn. Sergeant, you... You mean you believe what I said? I want to, Lynn. I'm going to make it a point to get to the bottom of this case. Oh, but, Sergeant, from the facts Mr. Danvers has given, it looks like a tight case against Beckett. We'll investigate some of those facts, Harry, to get at the truth. Meantime, I'll take the responsibility of letting Lynn go home if he'll give his word to be there when we want him. Thanks. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. I promise to be available. I'll walk over with you. I promised Tommy I'd bring King to visit next time I came to town. I'll be back shortly, Harry, and we'll get busy on this case. Meantime, get your horse ready to travel. All right, Sergeant. Let's go, Lynn. Come along, King. <coughs> Leaving the constable's office, Preston, followed by King, walked with Lynn Beckett toward Lynn's cabin on the edge of town. The sergeant asked a few questions as they walked. How do you account for the fact those men you spoke of let you come back to report the robbery, Lynn? I can't account for it, Sergeant. When they made me go with them, I didn't know what to expect. Well, after what Danvers told him, it would be natural for the constable to suspect you and consider your story fantastic. It's all so mixed up. I, I want to see Mr. Danvers right away and get things straight. No, keep away from Danvers. I'm sure he knows by now that you're back in town. Yes, I had to ride past the express office to get to the constable's. Danvers said he'd be late getting back. 
Yet he got back just before the boat sailed at noon. Yes, I know. What was his business up Beaver Creek Way, do you know? No, oh, I was wondering the same thing. I see. Ah, oh, here's my cabin. Hi, honey. Here's Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Mrs. Baggett. Hello, Sergeant. Daddy, I knew you didn't go away and leave Mom and me like Mr. Danver said. Of course I didn't, Tommy, of course. Hello, Tommy. Hi, Sergeant. Lynn, I was so worried that they said that I you... I know, Lucy, but it isn't true. It's all a mistake. Oh, golly, Sergeant. I knew if, if you and King were here, you'd tell them they're wrong about Daddy. I hope to be able to tell them that, Tommy. Now, you take King in the other room and play while your father and I talk a bit. How about it? Gosh, that'll be fine. Come on, King. Come on, Stella. Lynn, uh, what the two men look like? You ever see them before? No, I didn't, Sergeant. One was heavy set and had a black beard, and the other was clean shaven with a thin face and piercing eyes. Oh. What men are you talking about? Lynn, what happened? I was so frightened. I... Well, Lynn can tell you all about it after I leave, Mrs. Beckett. Oh. Lynn, uh, I believe your story, and I'm going to try to trail those men. Thanks, Sergeant. My belief in you doesn't put you in the clear. There's more to this than you think. The constable thinks I'm lying. Yes, because your story seems too fantastic to be true, but, then. But a minute ago, you said you believed oh, Just a minute, don't misunderstand. I believe you because I know you're too intelligent to make up such an illogical story. I told exactly what happened, so. I have a feeling the constable reacted as someone intended he should. And since he thought you lied, he naturally wouldn't attempt to trail them in. You're going to trail them? Yes, I am. And if we catch those two men, you're the only one who can identify them. So I'll expect you to be here when we get back. I'll be here, don't worry. Tommy's having so much fun with King, Sergeant. I, I wish he could stay a while. I'll leave King here until we get back. It's uh, about 3 o'clock now. With luck, we ought to be back early this evening. I'll send the horse you rode back to the livery stable. Then the constable and I'll start after those two men. Sergeant Preston and the constable set out along the north trail in pursuit of the men Len spoke of. As they pushed on, the cold wind blew in heavy gusts. Well, we found hoof marks that seemed to bear out Lynn's story, Harry. Yeah, maybe, Sergeant. But others could have ridden this way, you know. <laughs> Hard to convince, aren't you? Could be. The circumstances related by Mr. Danvers tie together rather completely. That's right. Almost as if they were planned and rehearsed. I figure if Lynn decided to steal that gold, he'd have thought of a story that wasn't so fantastic as you call it. Now, wait a minute. Look there. Whoa, Blackie. Whoa, now. Whoa, there, boy. Whoa. One horse turned here and went back, and two horses continued. See there? Uh, maybe Beckett did come here with two others and then ride back. They could have been accomplices. In that case, he could have had them tie him up in the express office and left him there. Let's get going. This wind's blowing up a storm. I'd like to catch those two before it breaks. Get up, Blackie. Get up there, boy. Meantime, the two crooks, Chuck and Lou, had turned off onto a branch trail that gradually circled back towards Selkirk. We'll soon be at the old cabin Danvers fixed up for us at Beaver Creek. I'm glad to get out of this cold wind. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that dope express clerk Beckett is sitting in jail now, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Danvers worked out everything just right. I'll bet that constable thought Beckett was a lying fool when he went back telling how two men stole the gold, made him ride out the trail a ways, and then politely let him go back to report it. <laughs> you know, Danvers figured out a good idea there. With a lot of money in the safe untouched and just the gold missing, the constable will blame Murat Beckett right away without even thinking of trying to check on us. Especially with the other facts Danvers thought of. That cabin on Beaver Creek is only about half an hour from town. It'll be plenty safe enough for us to stay there. Yeah, Danvers will come out there tonight to get his share, won't he? Yeah. Hey, it's beginning to snow. Let's get a move on. Get up. Get up. Come on. Come on. Back in town, John Danvers had seen Lynn Beckett ride to the constable's office. He had seen Sergeant Preston walk with Lynn toward the Beckett cabin. And later, he watched furtively from his office window as Preston and the constable rode from town toward the North Trail. He hadn't counted on Sergeant Preston being in Selkirk, and he realized that something had caused the Mounties to check on Lynn's story about the two crooks. He paced the floor as he thought aloud. Hey, Thunder, I never thought for a minute Beckett's story would be considered. Must be that sergeant. I had the constable convinced with the facts I gave him. Chuck and Lou couldn't have reached the Beaver Creek cabin yet. They won't expect to be followed either. Gotta think of something. Can't sit here like this. Have to warn him somehow. 
I'll have to. It's beginning to snow outside. Well, that's a break. It'll cover their tracks. As Danvers stood gazing out the front window, he saw a woman and boy, heads bent against the wind and the snow, heading toward the general store. Lynn Beckett's wife and son. Beckett didn't come back with that sergeant. That means he's home alone right now. I think I'll pay him a visit before I head for the cabin on Beaver Creek. Maybe things will work out all right after all. Sergeant Preston and a constable had followed the trail of the crooks along the branch trail until finally the windswept snow caused them to lose the trail. They reined to a halt. Oh, back in. Oh, easy, brother. Oh, trying to go on now, Harry. They could have turned off in any one of these smaller trails here. That's right. The storm's getting pretty bad to be traveling horseback. From the general direction, it seems they're headed back toward town. Yeah. Thought if they'd take that chance, though. For the time being, we'll give it up and get back into Selkirk. Only thing to do right now. That's right. Let's get going. Go, Blakey. Get up there, boy. It was some time after the two Mounties had started back to town when John Danvers made his way toward Beckett's cabin on the edge of town. In the cabin, Lynn rested on a sofa while waiting for his wife and boy to return from the store. King had crawled behind the large stove and lay dozing in its warmth. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Huh? I wonder who that is. Oh, Mr. Danvers. Come in, sir. Hello, Beckett. I have much time, but it was very important that I come here. I've been wanting to talk to you. There's a lot I don't understand. You know I wouldn't steal, You're and that's what I... You're a fool, Beckett. You told the constable things that weren't true. It was almost as if you were trying to... I thunder maybe you did try to frame me at that. <laughs> Getting wise, huh? But they wouldn't believe you. Why, oh, you... Look at... A gun. Well, you wouldn't dare use it. I certainly would. In fact, I intend to. Well, what do you mean? What have I done to you? I got this gun from your desk at the office, Beckett. If you're shot, your own gun lies beside you. They'll say it's suicide, a confession of guilt. Those crooks. You had them do it. Yes. After I leave here, I'll join them at the old cabin on Beaver Creek. I'll warn them to hide the gold for a while. If the Mounties should find them... You, the only witness to identify them, will be dead. A suicide. You're insane, Danvers. Raving mad. You won't get away with oh, it. Oh, yes, I shall. We've talked enough already, though. Now, Beckett, one of your own bullets will kill you. Now, wait a minute. Behind Stay the right big stove, the intelligent dog, King, had raised his head this when Danvers came down, in. Please. When he realized it was someone Lynn knew, he dropped his head again. Then, as the men talked angrily, suicide. he became alert and got slowly to his feet. As Danvers raised his gun and aimed it at Lynn, King decided to act. The big dog sprang for Danvers' gun arm just as he squeezed the trigger. Get away! Get away from me! Help! Get away! Get this dog off me! That dog, he attacked me! Get him off! Danvers! Look, Lynn's on the floor. I got it in the shoulder. Danvers came to kill me. King spoiled his aim. We'll put you on the sofa, Lynn. There. Oh, thanks. Get water, Harry, and some bandages. It isn't serious. All right. Thank heaven you left King here, Sergeant. He saved my life. Lucy and Tommy went uptown to the store. Danvers must have seen them, realized you were alone. He must have been behind that robbery. Uh, here's the water and bandages. Good. I'll fix him up now. Danvers admitted to me that he planned the robbery. Uh, You're a liar. Shut up, you. The two men there in the old cabin on Beaver Creek. Huh? So, uh, they have the gold with them. Why, you do not get you for that. I'll take him, King. Oh, Oh, that sure took care of him, Sergeant. He asked for it. Now we'll tie him up. Harry, you stay here. I'll take King and we'll go after the other two men. When we get them here, we'll get the full story. Lucy and Tommy returned home after Preston and King had left for the old cabin, and the small group waited tensely for their return. Over an hour went by, and then they heard King bark outside. The constable hurried to open the door. There they are now. In another moment, those inside watched as Sergeant Preston and King followed the two crooks into the cabin. When the three men removed their parkas, the others could see the evidence of the battle that must have taken place during their capture. One sleeve of Lou's jacket was missing, and Chuck's face was bruised and swollen. The constable chuckled as he noted bruised knuckles on Sergeant Preston's right hand. Say, it looks like you did a bit of work with your fist, Sergeant. Yes, the big one got his face in my way. 
King took the other's sleeve as a souvenir and he pulled his gun. The gold's in their saddlebags, Harry. No need to ask if you can identify these crooks, Lynn. Those are the ones, all right. Go on, you never saw us before. You two stole that gold. You can't lie out of it. Danvers is the one who planned the whole thing. That's a lie. Both of you are just as much to blame as I am. I should have gone up to that cabin and gunned both of you. Instead of coming here and you're running into trouble with that dog. By thunder, Lou, I'll bet that's what he would have done after he finished off Beckett. You see, Constable? They've admitted they were all in this together. Guess I owe you an apology, Lynn. Thank heaven the sergeant was here to set me straight. You're new in the service, Harry. I've learned by long experience you can't always go by what seem to be facts. Well, I'm so thankful you left King here, Sergeant. So am I. While we're out getting nowhere, King stays behind and catches the big crook, Danvers. Oh, golly, I wish King could stay here all the time. Don't you, King? Then we could play. <laughs> now, let's go in the other room. <laughs> Well, get these crooks to jail, Harry. King's ready for play now. He knows as well as we do this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. <laughs> Yippee! Ride em, cowboy! Yes, sirree. Little wonder many a top-action Hollywood movie star goes for a breakfast of Quaker-puffed rice or Quaker-puffed wheat. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a man-size taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker-puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Remember, they come only in those famous big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you have the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Shanghai Sergeant. I was the Shanghai Sergeant. Yes, it happened one night on the Skagway waterfront. I was out of uniform, and I was knocked over the head and dragged aboard the schooner Northern Star. It looked as if I'd be shipping for Tahiti. But that was before I found out that the only passenger on the Northern Star was wanted for robbery and murder. And when he found out who I was... It looked as if my only trip would be to the bottom of Skagway Harbor. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So long.